fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. Hey everyone, welcome back to Obscurus Lupa Presents. It's subspecies 3, so let's do that recap thing. After the events of the first movie, Radu had to reattach his head, which was moderately easy, and get rid of his goody-two-shoes brother, Stefan, which was very easy. Michelle instantly grew long hair and took off with a bloodstone, which caused Radu to run crying to his mom. Meanwhile, Michelle's sister Becky arrived in Romania to find her and enlisted the help of American Embassy Mel, Lieutenant Maureen, and Professor McDeddington. While this was going on, Radu continually tried and failed to impress his mother. He kidnapped Michelle because she's so strong and independent and almost ate Becky, but not before he was stabbed a million times. The movie concluded with Michelle being grabbed by Mommy Radu, presumably so she cries some more. And so it continues. With the three minute recap and the reused intro sequence, it takes about five minutes to get into the actual movie. This one has an advantage over the last one in that they had actually planned for a sequel this time around, so as far as consistency goes, this one is a little less rocky. The film begins where the last one left off, with Becky leaving Michelle in the tomb and figuring out what to do next. She starts with changing her clothes, so anyone who wanted to see William Shatner's daughter naked, you're welcome. I just killed a lot of boners there, didn't I? Meanwhile, Michelle's part of her big happy vampire family again, which I guess means that Mummy Radu just grabbed her so she could go to sleep again? I curse your beauty. Oh wow, really? You're concerned about your looks now? And I don't know if that's the first thing I'd curse her for, what with her stabbing your son in the face and all. So I guess that means he's got to be revived again, though his fake out death last movie was a little lackluster compared to the whole beheading thing. And wait, he recovered from being impaled and losing his head just fine on his own, but he gets stabbed a few times and his mom's got to revive him? While this is going on, Becky heads toward the nearest pub so she can call for help. Wait, what happened to this? I'll wait for you till dark. She didn't even wait five minutes. She gave up on that pretty quickly. Maureen and Mel show up at the tomb, but they only find the professor's body inside, leading Becky and the audience to wonder where the vampires went since it's still daylight and the same day. And no one gave Becky any pants at some point? <laughs> Oh, so they were just in the next room, I guess. Top-notch police work there. <gasps> Mom, you will not embarrass me! Hey, Michelle, what's up? I'm so excited! I've got our whole day planned! Just to review, this was Michelle when she last saw Radu. <laughs> and this is Michelle now. No! Don't hurt me! Back to status cry, I see. Michelle, be honest. What conditioner do you use? Your hair is so soft! Radu and his mom decide it's time to leave since the police are snooping around. So... This happens. They just gave up and decided to be fucking ridiculous, didn't they? They could teleport this whole time? And what happened to being completely comatose during the day? I mean, I realize that's an easily exploited weakness, but that's what you've established in your movie, subspecies. Speaking of which, are the little finger demons somehow becoming even less relevant? I didn't think that was possible. Okay, there's definitely something weird going on here. So, it was a bunch of smoke that finally convinced you, Mel. Nothing else seemed weird, and this is what changed your mind? I think this pretty much sums up this series. There's Mummy Radu laughing her ass off at things that aren't even remotely funny, Michelle screaming and crying, and Radu standing there with the most ridiculous face he could think up at the time. Oh, check it out! This is fabulous! Give me that! Oh, Mom, for reals! From this night forth, we shall be as one. All that is mine will be yours. Nice to see so forgiving about the stabbing incident. And wasn't that promise he made supposed to be if she accepted him as her master? 
Because right now, all we've seen her do is cry more, and she did plenty of that in the last movie. Need before your master. Oh, sweet! That actually worked! Ah, the return of the cage mechanism. How I long to see that again. I guess that means Michelle's gonna have to get out by cutting off her fingers and making her own unnecessary finger demons. You promised you would teach me everything. You must have learned patience. No, really. We're gonna have Radu teaching Michelle how to be a Jedi here? Seriously? Does this look like a vampire who knows shit about anything? Look at his expression. It looks like he's genuinely trying to figure out if a bear shits in the woods. I don't think he's got much to teach her. This is a pretty stupid storyline, I have to admit. Anyway, smell you later. <laughs> now, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, kill Michelle's stupid sister. Let me just reuse this footage from the last movie and here we go, time for boobs. Oh damn it, he's here? Well now I definitely can't kill her. I mean, I can't take that guy, he's totally ripped. How? How are you alive, Radu? You belong to me. Then you'll know horror. Everything's so amusing to her nowadays. Oh, Michelle! Look, I brought you takeout! Um... I just thought I'd show you that. Let me take a moment to address a very serious issue here. Now, I've gotten some complaints about the, quote, titty blinders being in these reviews, so I've decided to make things more fair. You're welcome. Oh, Michelle, you're going to love it here. It's so cozy. You know, sometimes I just like to lie here and think about, you know, stuff. Becky and Mel, meanwhile, are consoling the professor's... wife? Secretary? I don't know. But somewhere, a woman with very scary eyebrows is waiting for someone to tell her about her dead husband as well. He was a crazy old fool. <laughs> Such a stupid way to die! <laughs> well, she's not wrong. But please, don't disturb anything. I'm gonna mess everything up. <laughs> hey, those are back on the wall. He took those with him when they went to kill Radu. While Becky and Mel are stealing the weapons, Lieutenant Marine and his men decide to investigate Castle Vladislav. This is Lieutenant Marine, police of Bucharest. What is the gate, please? How do we get inside? Okay, so he either believes the story that these are a bunch of vampires, or he thinks that known murderers are hanging out in there. Either way, I don't think they're gonna open the gate for him. He spots Becky and Mel, who have come to the castle to do some slaying. Should we drop the stakes, or what? Uh, no, no, just, um, act natural. Hey, are those stakes? Nope, sure aren't. Okay, well, I won't acknowledge them this whole scene then. Allow me to throw my food around in a comical fashion. Well, since I obviously don't believe your vampire story, allow me to accompany you in here while you try to stake someone. This series is just full of people believing things with no real reason to, isn't it? But they find the passageway blocked. Obviously, they were expecting us. Yes, they were expecting these three people who they could kill very easily, but for some reason don't. After the police leave, Becky wants to go back to the castle. I just want to watch the place for a little while. Don't let them see us. We're not safe here. Come on. Well, that was pointless. Thanks for that detour, movie. Your sister is a foolish one. Leave her alone. Eh, uh, don't look at me. This is between you and Mom. She's my sister. I love her. There's no love between the living and the dead. What do you feel is hunger. You like that? I read that in a book once. But anyway, yeah, that love thing is probably just gas or something. You promised to teach me. Can you believe this shit? 
uh, immortality, I tell you. You never get any younger. Back in town, Maureen notices Becky and Mel staying at a hotel together. Ah, uh, taking tactics from Radu, I see. And did we miss a scene that gave us a reason why he needed to hide from them? According to this legend, the castle was originally owned by this family of sorcerers until this uh, Vladislas guy came along and seduced the daughter. Their last name is Vladislas now? They can't even keep that consistent? What? Oh. Apparently that was something I misheard and it was always Vladislas. Thanks, IMDB. Pointless recapping of the backstory we're already familiar with? Well, that's reason enough to have sex. I mean, you know, these two have such chemistry. Well, he wears sweaters anyway. But shit, I guess Becky forgot she was traumatized. Sex scene over. What is it? Oh shit, I forgot why we came out here. Uh, I'd better say something that sounds important. Reach out with your senses. Violin? Ugh! Oh, you suck, asshole! Go back to music school! Teach me to fly. As you do. What? You know I can't fly! What the hell kind of bullshit have you been reading? Oh wait, were the shadows supposed to be flight? Cause all I'm seeing is this. Ah! Ah! Holy shit! How the hell did I get up here? Ah! Ah! Yeah, keep smiling, bitch! I'll kill you when I get down! Oh, Michelle, bet you can't do that! <laughs> oh, no fair! Hey, is that woman randomly disappearing and reappearing as if by magic? Seems safe enough. Hey, Michelle, save me some! And thus, the violinist got exactly what was coming to him. Let this be a lesson to all aspiring musicians out there. Note that, yet again, Michelle is not actually doing anything on her own here. You might think that luring someone to their death is something, but she doesn't actually kill him. She waits for Red Dew to do it. But hey, second tries the charm. Let's see if Michelle can kill someone this time. <laughs> nope. Well, let's see what Lieutenant Maureen's up to. Picking at his butt. Lovely. You might think I'm taking that scene out of context. I'm not. That's really it. Holy crap! What are you doing sitting out in the sun? Are you like suicidal or something? Because damn it, I do not date emo chicks. Wait, I want to see the dawn. We will wait. Are they actually trying to be romantic with this? I'm asking a legitimate question here. I really can't place the tone of the scene. Say what you will about Stefan, but at least you could see the romantic aspects of vampirism in his story. Nosferatu here, not so much. Is it true that the sunlight can kill us? Uh, you're getting really morbid, Michelle. What else can kill a vampire? What an oddly specific question. Kill me, Radu. Oh, what? I thought things were really working out. Are you sure you aren't on your period or something? I love you, Michelle. I shall love you until the end of time. <laughs> oh, Radu, you charmer. Let's have a quick recap of Michelle and Radu's romance. Memories light the corners of my mind. If we had the chance to do it all again, tell me, would we? Could we? Oh yeah, that's the stuff. See, we're like totally meant to be. I hate you. <sighs> I'm so telling mom. You can hike this guy. He's CIA, but he's totally cool. Unlike those other CIA guys, they can be real jerk offs. So that's Mel's actual plan. Call in a CIA guy to help them slay vampires. You can see how well this will pan out. This allows Maureen to do some more comic relief and tag along. Then we get to meet CIA guy, Bob, who... Wait, this is the CIA guy? Everybody cool here? Did I suddenly change channels? Is this subspecies 3? Weird shopping list, buddy. 
What are we? Vampire hunting. Nice to know he called in someone with little to no experience in this area. Armed with silver bullets from a melted down crucifix, the three... four stooges are ready for battle. But Maureen totally doesn't believe them, that's why he's going along with this. Alright Bob, show us what you got. We'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there! G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe is there! Hands up, Granny! I love this movie. No joke, that's it for his character. Play it again. Hands up, Granny! Ooh, faced! <laughs> well, at least someone's having a good time. <gasps> good morning, got your sister's boyfriend. Anyway, did you sleep well? This necklace will look gorgeous on you. <sighs> you are an angel! Figuratively speaking, of course. We are both damned for eternity. Ah, oh, Mom! I know you are not sitting on my throne! This starts an argument about the necklace, where Radu and his mom bitch about who gets the treasure. Michelle just kind of sits back and lets what happened happen because, again, she's Michelle. This leads into Radu's mom basically calling him pussy-whipped and trying to kill his girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, gross! Forgive me, mother. No. Ah. <laughs> That'll show you. Now I'm free to be with this woman who completely loathes me. Man, I've made some great decisions. Is it a rule that Radu's gotta kill at least one family member every movie? Because he's kinda out of relatives at this point. Hey, Michelle, look! She'll never get ahead now! <laughs> Okay, yeah, that is pretty disgusting. Curse you forever. Oh, Mom, why did you have to say that? I feel really bad about killing you now. You know, in retrospect, killing the only person who ever liked me for you seems kind of dumb now. Kill my father, my mother, my entire bloodline. Oh, bullcrap. You didn't even know her when you killed your dad, and Stefan's death was iffy at best. What will you grant me in return? Forgiveness for what you've done to me. There is not enough forgiveness in the universe for all I've done. Oh, this is just a load of poo. For serious. Radu feels guilty about the things he's done? Yeah, right. What is this Beauty and the Beast crap? The moment the singing candlesticks come out, I am so out of here. I mean, kudos for trying, but this is Red Dew we're talking about here. This is the same guy who we saw do this. I cannot take him seriously. I would very much like to help you. I know Rebecca would too. Oh yeah, I just remembered! I'm evil! Please, sir. He calls him sir? You're pleading with an ancient vampire, not on your first job interview. Look at you, I have a more so I know. Please. No! Oh, feel like I overreacted there. I was doing the big no and everything. Oh, what the hell? Did mom kill any CIA special agents while I was sleeping? She never tells me anything. If you can hear me, please answer me. turned into Tommy was so please Radu I have to speak to her I'll come back I promise Taylor's old as time true as it can be so Radu makes her promise her absolute devotion in return to sparing her sister's life or possibly so she won't start crying again while Michelle and Becky have some girl time Lieutenant Maureen gets a visit from Radu don't! You know, this rescue group really is failing. Michelle tries to convince Becky to leave, but she won't go without Mel. Please take me to a- Hello! This gun is loaded with silver bullets. Oh, damn it! I want you to release my friends, and then Michelle and I are leaving. And you better not try and stop us. 
Do you understand? Uh, can you rephrase that so Michelle does not go with you? And why doesn't Becky kill Radu now? I tell you, women are so ungrateful. I killed my whole family and what do I get? Jack sheet! Okay, Michelle. Let's get out of here. You want to kill your sister and her stupid friends. Search your heart, Michelle. You know it to be true. Instead of leaving with Becky, Michelle decides she's gonna try and kill herself. Oh, Michelle! I love you or something! Oh, damn it! Son of a bitch! Again! Right in the face! Michelle, Becky, Mel, and random victim girl run away into the day, only to find Radu there. Again. Surprise. All right, Michelle. I'm getting really pissed now. Let me stumble gracefully toward you. Michelle starts to wussy out in the sun, so Mel and Becky put her in a body bag to take her along. But Radu's still on the case, and scarier than ever. <sighs> One last chance. Give me my bloodstone and my boobs, and I kill you quickly. You want it? Go for it! Oh, damn it! <laughs> oh, shit! I knew I was forgetting something! Oh, damn it! And with that spectacular failure, the other three pack Michelle into the trunk and take off, never to be seen again. Just kidding, there's one more movie. Also this. <laughs> Now the subspecies? Really, movie? Now? In the form from skin chunklets, too? How? Come on, he's melting! So there you go, that was subspecies 3. Michelle was just as useless as ever, but I have two scenes that make this movie spectacular. Heads up, Granny! And that's all I need to sum it up, I think. You heard what I said? We've still got one more movie to go. So next week, it's Subspecies 4. We must destroy him, Master. <laughs> Subspecies 4. You're mine. Forevermore. Store. The sun is a mass of incandescent gas, a gigantic nuclear furnace, where hydrogen is built into helium at a temperature of millions of degrees. The sun is hot, the sun is not a place where we could live, but here on Earth there'd be no life without the light it gives. We need its light, we need its heat. Hands up, Granny!